everyone, it's Haley, and today is Bookmas Day 2, so I'm going to be talking about my top 10 books that I read in 2019. So unlike my usual top 10 videos or recommendations videos, this is actually a ranked list. So I will be counting down from my 10th favorite book of the year, I don't know why I made that so complicated, to my absolute favorite book of the year. And I'm very excited to discuss these books with you. I hope that you might have an idea of what I loved. I feel like you probably will because, I mean, I talk about what I love constantly. So if you do have a guess, leave it down below now and then see if you are right at the end. But I did want to mention that my reading year is a little bit different than other people's and that's just because of Bookmas because I start pre-filming Bookmas in November so I cut off my reading year at the end of November. So anything that I read in December 2018 that is one of my favorites will be on this list. I hope that made sense and wasn't too complicated. Basically I just end my reading year early because I do these videos. So my reading year is still 12 months. It just starts in the previous December and goes to the November. I just, yeah, you get it. So this was a really hard list to rank and I feel like it generally is, especially if I have read quite a few things that I feel kind of middle of the road. And this was kind of like last year in the sense that I did read quite a few books that I feel like were middle of the road, but I'll talk about more of my reading in general in a later Bookmas video where I show you guys every single book that I read in the year. But today we're focusing on my favorites. So in ranking this list, I took a few things into account and it's kind of hard because my five star star for one book is very different than a five star for another book. So the main thing that I took into account when creating this list is kind of entertainment value, basically just my personal feelings about a book. So this is a very personal list. It is based partially on the critical content of the book, but it's mostly just a feeling that I get when I love a book. So without further ado, let's just get into the list. So coming in at number 10 is 11 Other Words by Christina Lauren. This is an adult romance book that I love because it spans time and that was one of my favorite elements of it. So you get then and now in alternating chapters and it's about an old love, a first love that never came to be. But in the present day it's them reconnecting and how they're going to move forward when there's still a lot of feelings between them and they don't know how to recover from the thing that set them apart. One of my favorite tropes is characters coming together again who could have had this epic romance and they finally realize that and rekindle that and I don't know what the specific term for that trope is but I love it. So in here you get a deeply emotional story and it's an intricate love story that spans across time and I just felt for the characters and was surprised at how emotional it was but I think it was so well done and I really loved following Macy and Elliot and their kind of will they won't they story and just oh it broke my heart but also put it back together again. It was a roller coaster. My ninth favorite book of the year was Thunderhead by Neil Shusterman. This is the sequel to Scythe which I am so glad that I finally read. I don't know when I would have gotten to it if not for Bookmarked because we read Scythe as our Bookmarked book of the month. I don't even know which month it was but after rereading it I realized how much I loved that story and I was like you know what I think I need to read the sequel and the sequel was even more wild than the first book. Like wow. If you aren't familiar with the Scythe universe it is set in a utopian society and I use quotation marks because in my opinion a utopia is basically a dystopia. They're pretty much the same thing but there are Scythes which are these people who are appointed to decide when people die and how they die and all of them have different criteria and the two main characters of the first book they end up becoming scythe apprentices and training to be scythes. So obviously that's a lot of pressure and it's built up to be like this super creepy story but it's so fascinating. The world is amazing and intricate and terrifying and I think that is what Neil Shusterman does best and like I said it got even crazier in this book so like I can't even imagine what's gonna happen in the next one, which I need to read really soon. No spoilers, please. But this sequel did pretty much blow me away. Like so many things happened that I didn't expect to and just, it was wow. Next is Skyward by Brandon Sanderson. So this is the one book on this list that I actually read in December of 2018, but I loved it so much that I knew it had to be on my top picks of the year. So that is why we are making an exception. So Skyward is a sci-fi book, which is like very unusual for me. It's not very often 
often that I fall in love with a sci-fi book, but it was also my introduction to Brandon Sanderson, who is a fantasy and sci-fi author that everyone seems to love, and now I totally get why. In this book, we follow Spencer, who is trying to become a pilot. It's all she's ever dreamed of. She lives in a world that has been constantly at war with this alien planet, and that is all she's ever known. So she has wanted to be like her father, who fought against these aliens that have been attacking them for years, but her father ends up getting into some trouble, and because of that, Spencer has a really difficult time becoming a pilot because the world and everyone in their society is set against her now. This is a book that I loved for a number of reasons. One, it was super well developed. I thought that the technology and the sci-fi aspect of it was really easy to understand and built extremely well. And two, it's a story about Spencer being determined and rising above her adversities and getting to where she wants to be. There's also a talking spaceship, like sentient spaceships are amazing. And there's also no romance plot line, which is nice because I don't think this book needed it. It really soared without it. I was in a slumpy mood when I ended up picking this up and I had seen this book everywhere. And even though it was Christmas and at Christmas time, I don't generally read big books like this, especially sci-fis, which is a genre I struggle with in the beginning. I usually will pick up a short contemporary, something that's going to be quick. And especially when I'm feeling slumpy, but for some reason, I just wanted to read this book so badly last December. And I remember I picked it up and I devoured it so quickly. I just fell in love with it. And it was extremely readable, fascinating, and a wild ride overall. And I cannot wait for the sequel, which will be out by the time you see this video, but I don't have my copy yet. So I don't know if I'm going to read it this year or next year, try and squeeze it in this December. Maybe if I can, that would be awesome. But either way, this was definitely a favorite of the year. Next is another sequel. And that is Before the Devil Breaks You by Libba Bray. I finally listened to this audiobook. It took me so long to finally get to it, but like I'm so glad that I did because being back in the Diviners universe was amazing. It made me fall in love with it all over again, and I think it's the final book. King of Crows is coming out in early 2020, so now I'm ready for it. If you aren't familiar with the Diviners, you should definitely read it, but it is a mystery kind of thriller story that is set in the 1920s, so you get that full flapper effect, and there's ghosts and just all sorts of creepy things. It's definitely pretty scary and like I have a really low scare tolerance so keep that in mind but the 1920s atmosphere is the perfect setting for this mystery story. It's just so good. I love all of the characters and there's a lot of characters but every single one of them I fell in love with and I feel like is equally developed and I'm very invested in their stories and I need to know how it's going to end because I have no clue. And this book definitely did a good job of thickening the plot and getting ready for that final book, the finale of it all. I feel like every book has just set the stakes higher and higher and it's like who knows what's going to happen in the end. Coming in at number six is a book that I'm sure is on a lot of people's favorites list of the year and for good reason and that is Red, White, and Royal Blue by Casey McQuiston. This is a male male romance about America's first son who falls in love with Prince Henry of Wales and it is an enemies to lovers story which generally isn't a trope that I'm that fond of but in this case it was so good. This book was so much more than a romance though. It was a very layered story. You also have politics going on there. There's a lot of important messages that are relayed over the course of the story, but you do also get that adorable romance. I became invested in the characters without even really realizing it. I was just like, they snuck their way into my heart and oh my gosh, I had like audible reactions to things that were happening. I was like, this is so cute. And if you haven't given this book a chance because you're intimidated by the hype, don't be. It's totally worth it. The read. Next coming in at number five is Her Royal Highness by Rachel Hawkins. This is a female female romance that is kind of similar to Red, White, and Royal Blue honestly, but it's kind of the YA version. So we follow Millie and Millie ends up doing what the only thing you can really do when you go through a breakup. She ends up going to a boarding school thousands of kilometers away in Scotland. So when she gets to that boarding school, she is hoping to have it easy, kind of relax, but she ends up being roomed with Princess Flora, who is the princess of Scotland. And once again, we kind of have an enemies to lovers story, sort of opposites attract, and it is so cute. Flora is one of my favorite characters. I really enjoyed her, but the relationship between the two of them, the banter, 
everything about it was amazing. Actually, this whole duology is honestly one of my favorites of the year. Prince Charming is the first book, but I decided to include this one on the list because it is my favorite out of the two. I think the romance in this one is a little bit better, but both of them are excellent. Really, if you're looking for a modern day cute little fairy tale, check this out. Also, Red, White, and Royal Blue. They're just great. Now, getting to my top four books of the year, next is On the Come Up by Angie Thomas. Angie Thomas is the author of The Hate You Give, and I was so nervous to read her second book because The Hate You Give came out so strongly and was an amazing start to her career, and On the Come Up was a great follow-up. I was definitely not disappointed. It had the same important messages as The Hate You Give, but it was a little bit lighter in a way, but it did still have a certain amount of heaviness and was very impactful. So in this book, we're introduced to Brie, and Brie wants to be a rapper. She is the daughter of an underground rap star who ended up dying before he could actually make it big, and Brie has since then just wanted to continue his legacy in her own way. But now the stakes are higher than ever because her mom has lost her job, so they might be facing eviction. The rapping element to this just elevated the story. The raps were beautiful, so well done, and the family dynamics and the relationships, I think, are what carried the story for me. I loved seeing Brie interact with her family in particular. It just was so heartwarming to see. Once again, this book deals with an important topic, racial profiling, and I think it did it very well. Now we're down to the top three. So coming in at number three is Radio Silence by Alice Oseman. This is one of those books that was so hyped up, and I didn't think that I was going to enjoy it as much as everyone else did, because that's kind of generally how my reading year has been seeming to go. But this book was excellent. It was very well done, and it deals with a topic that I think needs to be written about more, especially in young adult. So anyone who has dealt with academic pressure and the pressure to succeed in general and trying to find their path and not really wanting to go through the path that society sets out for you, this is definitely a book for you. It deals with the idea that you're supposed to go to school, get good grades, go to a good university, get a job, and then you'll be happy in life, but it's talking about how that might might not be the path for everyone and that's okay and I just think that is a message that like I didn't even know was really necessary until I read this book and I was like why isn't that talked about more? Alice Oseman did a fantastic job of dealing with that topic and if that's something that you're struggling with definitely pick up this book. I think it would really help. Next is my second favorite book of the year and that is Josh and Hazel's Guide to Not Dating by Christina Lauren. This I kind of hesitated to put it in the number two spot just because it feels really high but at the same time I think back on my reading experience with this book with such fondness. I loved it. I thought it was so cute and it also introduced me to an entirely new genre that I had never tried out before and that ended up being a large part of my reading year so I owe a lot to this book and I truly did love it. But really this is where it got kind of hard because it feels weird ranking this book on the same list as something like On the Come Up in Radio Silence but that's where I took entertainment value into account. But in this story, we kind of deal with that trope of an old romance that could have been but never was coming back to be. And like I said, it's my favorite. So we have our main character, Hazel, who is super quirky. She has her army of pets. She's a kindergarten teacher. She's like kind of overly quirky, but I love her as a character. And she ends up reconnecting with Josh, who is basically the complete opposite of her. He's very placid, straight-laced, sort of her mellow opposite, honestly. But but Hazel is determined to make a relationship between the two of them work and it's so much fun to watch. It's such a sweet and fun romance and honestly the easiest read and it just warmed my heart. I really loved it. If you want a fun loving sort of sweet easy read definitely check this out. It is a feel-good read all around and Christina Lauren that author duo in general I mean they've been on this list twice so obviously I pretty much love them. And finally my top book that I read in 2019. I feel like I'd be kind of surprised if you guys didn't guess this one but it also wouldn't be that surprising because I read it so long ago but it still holds the top spot and that is Daisy Jones and the Six by Taylor Jenkins Reid. No one is more surprised than me, honestly, to have this book at the top of my favorites list for the year because everything about it doesn't really seem like something I would enjoy that much. It is set in the rock and roll scene in the 1960s and 70s, and that's not something I really know a lot about, not something I've ever been interested in, but the characters are what carried the story for me and made me absolutely fall in love with it. So this was our very first bookmarked book of the month and it was a great one to start off with. We all loved it. And I actually have read it 
twice this year. And by read, I mean listen to, because for me, the audiobook was my favorite way to go for the story because it's told in an interview format. So you have the character name and then what they say. You don't have any exposition. And I think that's where this book has been kind of divisive. There's a lot of people who hated it and couldn't get through it. But for me, I loved it. The full cast audiobook was incredible. They all did so well and I can't wait to see. I think it's being adapted into a TV show. I don't remember, but whatever it's being adapted into, I can't wait to see it. So like I said, 1960s, 70s, rock and roll scene. You are dealing with, you know, all that stuff, sex, drugs, rock and roll. You're gonna get all of that in here, but we focus on Daisy Jones and The Six, which is a band that she ends up joining with, and the lead singer Billy Dunn and their relationship. So it's kind of a tragic love story, but it's it's also the story of how this band rose to fame, came together, and then ultimately ended up breaking up at the height of their fame. This has a fascinating method of storytelling that brought me into the characters' lives, and it was so realistic, and I was extremely invested in everything that was happening and once I finished the book I felt like it was very jarring. I was like how could this not be real? Especially reading it with Hannah and Zoe made me enjoy it that much more because we dissected it like so much. I'll link the live show down below for you guys to check out. We talked about it a lot like behind the scenes and on that live show so definitely check it out but it was my favorite of the year for sure. And this is actually the second year in a row where an adult book has been my favorite and not even adult romance, just like an adult book. Last year was The Nightingale. So who knows, maybe next year it will be the same. But actually this year did break a streak. Every year, the very first book that I read in January ends up being on my top 10 books of the year list. But this year that didn't happen. But this book is by the author of the first book that I read in 2019, which was The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. So. I feel like we still kind of have a little bit of a streak going. So those are all of my top 10 books that I read in 2019. Please let me know if you guessed any of them correctly. And also, I would love to know what your top three or even your number one book that you read in 2019 was. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Don't forget to click that subscribe button and then click that bell icon so you'll be notified whenever I post. I'm posting 21 videos for Bookmas in December, so you don't want to miss any of that. And you can also follow me on all of my social media. All my handles and links are down below. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye!